my name is uh, Prabha Siva. Um, this is my first YouTube video. Please bear with me. Um, the objective of this uh, session is to um, derive the Schrodinger's equation. Uh, Schrodinger's equation is one of the fundamental equation um, uh, framework, part of the quantum mechanics framework, which basically governs all the particles. Which is, uh, which is very critical to understand the quantum mechanics. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through how to derive the Schrodinger's equation. Uh, Schrodinger's equation uh, basically provides um, multiple things in the quantum mechanics framework. Uh, one of the things is um, it provides the total energy of a particle um, and also it provides the probability density function um, for uh, availability of a particle in a region. Um, so we will discuss the application of the Schrodinger's equation in the later session. Here the objective of this session is to uh, walk you through how to derive the Schrodinger's equation. Um, and again I will take some basic concepts what we learned uh, in the middle school or high school and uh, take the concept and go forward and come to the conclusion of the Schrodinger's equation. Um, so the objective here is uh, to derive Schrodinger's equation. Schrodinger's equation. So that is the objective of this um, session. Um, I want to bring some uh, basic uh, concept from classical mechanics, um, but uh, we all know that uh, the classical mechanics uh, framework cannot be applied in the microscopic uh, particles uh, like electron, photon, generally the quantum physics is the framework we need to use when it comes to the microscopic uh, elements, um, particles. Uh, so the classical mechanics cannot be used, it, it will not work. Um, so, But uh, there are some classical mechanics concept which we can use, um, the basic concept like the momentum, the frequency, wavelength, all those uh, basic things what we learned in the classical mechanics or electromagnetic uh, electricity and magnetism. Um, so let me um, go to the, some basic equation. Um, so, so we know that uh, according to the Newton second law, right, F equal to ma which is let us say if a particle, not particle, an object say of mass m is moving in this direction x and the net force uh, on this object is f and uh, if the particle is moving in the direction of x then velocity of that of that object excuse me is dx by dt that is the rate of change of displacement and the acceleration of that object is nothing but uh, rate of change of velocity which is dv by dt which is d square by dt square and uh, if uh, m f is equal to m dt square by dx square so dx square by dt square um, so if you know the initial position of this particle again object uh, x is equal to uh, so x of t let us say x of t is the function which gives the position of that object and if you know x of t velocity at time is equal to zero, by using the Newtonian uh, way we will be able to calculate the position of this object. Unfortunately we will not be able to use this framework as I said earlier to calculate the position of a particle um, in a quantum uh, mechanics, a quantum world. Um, so in this uh, line and uh, we know that the kinetic energy of this object, moving object is equal to 1 by 2 mv square, right, uh, which can be written as mv the whole square by m, which is p square by 2m, and p is the momentum, which is otherwise can be written as p is equal to mv, which is product of mass and velocity, right. So this is the kinetic energy. Uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to store some of the equation we will be using later. So I will keep this equation 
which is kinetic energy is equal to P square by 2m. Okay. Um, let me jump into this uh, quantum mechanics, um, some basic concepts. See, in quantum mechanics, um, the energy released by the particle of radiation is quantized. That means, like, it can be multiples of some quantity. That quantity is um, H mu, right? H is the Planck's constant. It's a very small number, six, approximately uh, 6.62 into 10 power minus 34 joules second, right? Uh, so the energy released in the quantum quantum particles in whatever manner the energy is released, it will be it will be multiples of this, right? So the n can be n can vary from zero to n. So h is the Planck's constant, and v uh, mu is the frequency. Okay. So this is the quantization in the quantum mechanics um, of the quanta. Right, um, so the energy is multiples of this. Right, so let us store this in a temp space. Um, say H, F. I'll, I'll, I prefer to call F because it, it makes more sense. Frequency F. Okay, so let us talk about this uh, photoelectric effect. Right, it's introduced by Einstein. Uh, and I think it's a very simple concept. Um, so let us take a metal sheet, and based upon the quantum configuration of the metal sheet, there will be electrons, right? So based upon the metal sheet you select, and, and based upon the metal sheet, the quantum configuration um, is, uh, is uh, you know formed based upon the metal sheet. Um, so let us say you expose this metal sheet to a radiation, any, elect any electromagnetic radiation. And uh, if the frequency of this electromagnetic radiation is above a threshold, then this radiation has enough energy to release this electron. Releasing electron means, um, you know, the radiation somehow breaks the electrostatic energy which holds that electron into this metal sheet. So once it does, then this electron is released, the flow of electron, the current, is, is generated, right? So this again, uh, the energy of this electron again will be multiple of this HF is directly proportionate to the frequency here, frequency of this radiation. In other words, the energy of this photoelectron, the photoelectron meaning this electron bumped off from this metal sheet because of this electromagnetic radiation photon falling onto this, if it is a visible light or x-ray. Uh, so with the photoelectron energy is directly proportional to the frequency of this radiation falls onto this metal sheet. So E is equal to HF, right? Great. So let us say uh, we want to represent this in angular uh, frequency, right? So omega, the angular frequency is 2 pi F, okay? You know that, uh, we learned long ago. So the, the the let's say the wave number, right? Um, so we can represent that wave number, um, which I will do it before I introduce a new one more concept. Okay. Um, so let's first uh, rewrite this e in from in terms of angular frequency, and also we can write this h dash, which is nothing but h by two pi, right? So if you do that, if you replace this, so it's H dash omega, angular frequency. So this is H by 2 pi, this is 2 pi f, so this is hf, which is same as the uh, before. So here, E is equal to H, H bar, I think it's called H bar, H bar omega, okay? 